If you've learned Roblox programming, this looks really simple, right? Well, it's extremely simple. It's the base of Roblox scripting. But this piece of code can easily be turned into this. And this looks a lot more complicated, doesn't it? Well, it actually really isn't that hard. So what's actually going on here is uh, the things that you are seeing here is something called type checking. And if you don't know what type checking is, well, it's something built into the Roblox engine that helps us uh, ensure that the values and objects in our scripts are of the correct types. So, for example, if a variable is supposed to be a number and only a variable, we can assign a type to that so that it does not change. And it helps us identify uh, that certain variables and certain, certain parameters are supposed to be of type number, type string, and stuff like that. Now, what you've seen was something called generic types. And basically, generic types, what they are, is this helps us create generic functions and generic data types that can basically work with any data type. All right, so stick with me here. I'm going to try to make this make sense. And basically, I'm going to make a function just called example. And I'm going to leave it just as a basic function, all right? Now we're going to make this a generic function by adding the less than and greater than symbol in, in between the naming and the parentheses and in here we're going to put capital T whatever you guys want this is kinda of customizable this is making this function a generic function and it's basically saying that it'll take any uh, type which is of type T and in here I'm just going to define like a first which will be of type t and the function will return type t so when, when, when we send something like a number like 10 what this is saying here as you can see it's automatically updating the type to number so when we pass in a number this type is already set to a number it's auto it's automatically identifying like it's setting the type in the function which we can then use in parameters and stuff like that so this is saying that the first parameter is of type t type t is basically the type of what we send in here which would be number and basically this colon is saying that this will return so if we were to return first it will return as an object that is of that type T which is a number right so this is basically this is a function that works with one data type right because there's there's only one parameter that is of type T and also returning a, a data type that has that type I hope that makes sense so we're sending in basically a number this T will be a number so first has to be a number and we're also returning a number hopefully that makes sense to you guys we can even uh, create multiple parameters with the same thing so we can say like second which is of type T you know and we can send in uh, two parameters or I meant arguments like we can send in two numbers which are actually the same uh, type which is a number hopefully this makes sense and well we can actually another thing we can do is define multiple types so now we're going to create this so that it is compatible with multiple types well up here I am actually going to uh, make a type of pair so type pair will be the same symbols I'm gonna say a and B is equal to a table and we can assign the parameters with these okay so we're gonna say like our first parameter will be of type a and our second parameter whoops and our second parameter will be of type B alright so now uh, we're gonna keep this but in here instead of just having type T we're gonna have types of a and also B oh whoops a and also B and so since our first one our first one is going to be of type A this will be A and our second one will be of type B as we can see there and we can uh, set this so that it will return uh, let's say a table and in there we can then get our pair and then say that in the table the first item in that list will be of type A and the second will be of type B and in here we're gonna make a table so table 
we're gonna say first is we're gonna just say well first is equal to first and second is equal to second so it's just easier and when we're calling this we're gonna say uh, we're going to actually wrap this so local pair is equal to create oh, its example and then we're going to send in one and also the number one now as you can see here we now have multiple types here so it says that our first um, argument here because it's the actual arguments because arguments are actual says first is of type number because that's what we sent in and our second is a string and uh, what we get from here is first and second which you don't have to have this here but especially making sure that we are returning uh, the correct types and then we're just going to print pair and see what this gives us run your game and I'm gonna zoom in and we have first which is equal to one and second is equal to one so I made that into that table so then we can uh, get that table set to these pairs alright so I made it in just into a table and set it to equal to each other and we just made it so we it would be compatible with these two types now you guys might be wondering why we have defined a type up here and in my other example I didn't have this type defined well it doesn't really make much of a difference because if we didn't have this type then we could just say this returns us uh, a table which would be first is of type A and second is of type B but this can get a little bit difficult so I just say pair and then uh, what we have which is A and B and this is to you know if we are uh, have multiple functions and different things like that we could reuse this uh, but if you are not reusing it then you know it would probably just make sense to not define a type and did as I just did um, that you know just it's useful for when you want to reuse stuff and you know making it not as confusing and because you know it might get a little bit harsh on your eyes when you're constantly defining these tables at the end and it might not make as much sense but yeah that is the purpose of this so let's say you had a table I'm just gonna get rid of this and I'm going to just make this of just type T and let's say we had a list okay so we're gonna define a list and we wanted to do this so I'm just gonna fix this real quick and we wanted to uh, get this list and basically do it the same way that we have been doing well we would you know we would uh, put the colon and you know just like how it is when you're type checking anything else like this like a number you would say that it would be of type square brackets uh, I mean squiggly brackets T what this is saying is that everything in the list or table will be of the same type alright so for example if we were to call example and get our list in there and say one two three four five well all of these are of the same type which is of the number so this is how you can do the same thing with like a list tables and everything like that so where would you guys want to be using generics in your game well some use cases of using generics is like collections you know creating uh, tables arrays and queues and all that uh, that can hold any type um, of the object and without needing to separate those and you know individually type checking those so this can save time uh, for queues and a whole bunch of tables if you want to type check all of them uh, stuff like that and also uh, writing functions like sorting functions mapping one then filtering uh, that can operate on different data types you can also make generic algorithms because uh, if you you can search through the same things that are of the same type for example but there are many more but you know this is useful in a lot of cases hopefully you guys can put this somewhere in your guys's game and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace